Now, with a little bit of history, I wanted to go through how a centrifugal pump is constructed. Uh, there are some variety and differences. Uh, this particular one is, uh, this example is going to be for a close coupled end suction pump. Uh, there are different centrifugal pump designs, and uh, we'll talk about those a little bit, but they all, it, in the end, perform very similarly. And so this particular pump, you have a suction, there's a flange on the, on the end of the pump where the fluid would enter the pump, and then there's a discharge. And so on this one, it is a radial discharge pump, and so there's a a flange going off to the side where the flow is going to exit the pump. And that essentially you're going to have fluid going in at a lower lower uh, pressure, and then you're going to have, or in centrifugal pump terms, head, you'll have fluid exiting the pump at a higher head. Now to, to look at more of the in internals and what's actually happening inside the pump, we're going to cut away part of the casing so you can actually see internal to this pump. And then also we're going to take uh, a portion of the impeller, which is called the front shroud, and we're going to make that transparent so you can actually see the vein geometry of the impeller sitting behind that shroud. And so um, what you're seeing here is now a, a, essentially a cutaway of a centrifugal pump. And when a pump is operating, the impeller is going to be rotating. And notice the direction of the arrows and the kind of curvature of the impeller vanes. Some people have a perception that the vein of the impeller would rotate, at least from this image, in a clockwise direction. However, that's not necessarily the case. The, well, it's not the case. The impeller has to rotate, in this case, in a clockwise or a counterclockwise direction. And the the veins of the impeller actually flick or, or uh, throw the fluid and uh, through kinematic energy. And so, um, again, the impeller is going to rotate. It's going to be driven by some sort of a rotating shaft. And that shaft has to be powered by some sort of an engine or drive. It could be an electric motor, a diesel drive, a hydraulic motor, or a variety of things. Um, when that impeller is rotating, it's going to start to accelerate the fluid, and this puts energizes the fluid, and that energy creates what's considered head in the fluid, and that's essentially an increased um, pressure in, inside the fluid. Um, that fluid that was in the impeller is now going to with higher energy and through centrifugal force, it's going to end up getting uh, thrown radially outside of the impeller into the casing. And so that energy accelerates that fluid, causing it to, to go outward radially into the casing geometry. And that geometry is called a volute geometry that collects that fluid and starts directing it. The fluid's then going to be okay, the, um, the casing then is going to collect the fluid and it's going to um, slow down the fluid. And it's actually through Bernoulli's principle that the fluid needs to slow down in order to generate higher head and that fluid's going to collect and get sent out of the discharge of the case. And it will essentially have a very high head as the fluid exits through the discharge nozzle. And so in order to replenish the fluid that's been pushed out of the casing, we need to be pulling more fluid into the suction of the, the pump. And so as the pump is operating, you get a, the, the fluid moves into the impeller because you have a low pressure region generated at the inlet of the impeller. And that low pressure um, is what will start to suck that fluid into the impeller or into the pump and therefore continue the pumping action of the 
ventricular pump. So again, you're, you're going to have fluid that moves from the impeller and into this low pressure zone at the impeller eye, and then that's going to pull that fluid through and and around in the centrifugal pump. <clears throat> and so by doing this, you're getting a continuous flow that's going through the centrifugal pump. And that one of the advantages of a centrifugal pump is that the flow is very stable, steady. You don't have pulsation uh, in the discharge or on the suction line when you're operating a centrifugal pump. Thank you.